Hi everybody, this is Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, and in this video I'm offering you my spin on the age-old question, what is love? You love chocolate and busty blondes or bulging muscles, cute furry animals, your brother or sister, mom and dad, lover or spouse. How can the same word have such different meanings? Since the beginning of time, humans have tried to define this crazy little thing called love. Recognizing the complexity of this emotion, the Greeks devised four different words to define the various forms of love. These are agape, which is unconditional love, eros, which is passionate love, philia, which is friendship or affectionate love, and storge, which is natural love, the kind felt by parents for offspring. In this video, I'm going to be discussing eros or passionate romantic love. Scientists tell us that passionate romantic love is nothing more than a chemical cocktail that combines nerve growth factor, testosterone, estrogen, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, oxytocin, and vasopressin. Well, I say this chemical cocktail is truly an elixir of the gods, for this love potion works divine magic on humanity, literally modifying our character, making us more flexible, kind, thoughtful, considerate, creative, generous, receptive, and responsive to our beloveds. Love is truly medicine that fortifies our soul's true purpose on earth, to perfect our ability to love others. It's been said that when you fall passionately in love with another, you are literally intoxicated by the other person's goodness. It has also been said that love is the attachment that results from deeply appreciating another's goodness. Speaking of goodness, we all know that our eyes initially latch on to outer goodness, which, if we like what we see, triggers lust and physical attraction. But here's the rub, no pun intended. Passionate romantic love also includes lust and physical attraction. So how's a body supposed to tell the difference between lifelong erotic love and mere physical attraction and lust? When speaking of passionate romantic love, I like to think of a series of hurdles. The first hurdle is time. While simple lust fades in a few weeks to months, true erotic or passionate romantic love lasts. In fact, partners who are deeply in love continue to feel attraction, lust, and passion for each other forever. So let's say a few months have passed and your lust hasn't bitten the dust. How can you now tell if yours is the kind of romantic love that will last? Luckily, social science research has pinpointed the factors associated with long-term love. As an aside, I should mention here that most happy long-term couples describe being friends first, last, and always. What researchers also know is that in addition to enduring passion, homogamy, or similarity, plays a key role in long-term love. That is, happy couples are those who are most similar in terms of tastes, values, and, and interests. Yes, opposites may attract, but they also end up fighting about every topic, large and small, which doesn't foster long-term lasting love. Now let's say a couple feels both passion and has cleared the homogamy hurdle. What happens next? They will likely want to form a long-term committed bond, which consists of an enduring concern for the other's welfare, a sense of mutual defense, I've got your back, you've got mine, a genuine and ongoing selfless wish to please the other, and a true sense of intimacy. Now at this point, I must correct a common misconception. People think of love as a feeling. I say that love is an action. In order for love to survive and thrive, you must actively appreciate the goodness in each other each and every day of your lives. But there's more. No matter how similar two people are, conflict inevitably erupts in all intimate relationships. It is how you handle your conflicts and the negative feelings that go with that that will determine whether your love makes old bones or sadly ends up in the boneyard. Love is an active process of working daily to appreciate each other's goodness and properly handling the negative feelings that inevitably arise in your relationship. Love patiently nudges you to redouble your efforts to listen, understand, and respond well to your beloved. Ultimately, I view love as a spiritual wake-up call, a reminder to live each day as though it's your last, 
sharing a heart that is generous and wide open. Some of us learn this lesson when we survive a life-threatening disease or accident, or when we lose a beloved to a terminal illness. These shake-ups are wake-up calls, reminding us how short our ride on earth is and that we better get busy loving and loving well. Unfortunately, when the dust of disaster settles, it's easy to forget the lesson. Luckily, life provides us another way to learn the lesson. Love. Love is life's only pleasant wake-up call, a sweet reminder of our true purpose on earth. But it is so very easy to forget the lessons of love, for when the bills, burdens, and baby bottles clutter our lives, it's easy to become lazy, complacent, and inactive. In the end, true love must always triumph. As humans, we must eternally strive to keep overcoming and surpassing the hurdles that life throws in the path of love. Each day, we must work to keep love alive in our hearts, treating the gift of each day as yet another chance to perfect our ability to love each other more perfectly.